This is ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. It's a lateral on the first play. Pitch back to Masolia. Looks downfield, and it's caught. Masoli is pressured and sacked on third down. Well, option look. Robinson still has it. Now pitches to Hunter, who dives to the pylon. Touchdown. Johnson <laughs> breaking tackles, looking for a big play. Jeremiah Johnson. He has a caravan down the sideline. Touchdown. Now these two powerful offenses. We did see some fireworks in the first half, but shockingly, a scoreless second quarter. You could have gotten long odds against that coming in. Oklahoma State leading at 17-7. They dominate time of possession. And Oregon will get the ball to start this third quarter. Chris Fowler, Craig James, Jesse Palmer, and Aaron Andrews. Kind of a puzzling first half for the Ducks offense. So used to moving down the field and scoring quickly. They were frustrated. This is Walter Thurman trying to create some field position with the opening possession, and he'll do so. Thurman takes off. The kicker to beat. Down inside the five. Walter Thurman, who had the pick at the end of the half, but was beaten consistently by Des Bryant, takes the second half kickoff back 91 yards. We talked about this just before halftime, and if you were Mike Bellotti in Oregon, that you were thinking, you know what? We played poorly, but we're still in this football game. Guarantee you, Jesse, they went into halftime and said, guys, let's regroup, let's get it going, and a big play like this to come out surely lifts them up. Well, the best way to start the half, no question about it, create instant field position with your special teams. Walter Thurman, monster return to put these guys in a goal the go scenario to make this thing a one possession game right away. Also by Johnny Thomas who finally forced Thurman down at the three yard line. It's Jeremiah Johnson shifting now to the left of Masoli on first and goal. Johnson picking his way. Near the goal line, stop short. You know, this offense here versus Oklahoma State's red zone scoring offense, they come out and they do the same thing, right? They spread you out and they can still power you inside. Well, they have that ability and they have Jeremiah Johnson. They also have the availability of a 230-pound running back with Garrett Blunt and Jeremiah Mazzoli can run it himself. Very, very dangerous team when they get down very close to the end zone. It's almost a lock. At 22 out of 24 touchdowns in this situation, Mazzoli just hammers across the goal line for a touchdown. So Oregon's two scoring drives have been a long one of one play and a very short one of two plays. And wow, Thurman, you got to hand it to him. It was a rough first half for him until he makes the pick and now the kickoff return. Well, it's amazing because I was thinking about how is this Oregon team going to respond coming out of the gates, really? They're, they're used to scoring 42 points a game. They only have seven. Are they dejected? Do they try to reinvent the wheel on the playbook? No, they come out. Great return by Walter Thurman. All of a sudden now we're back in the game. Eighth rushing touchdown of the year for Masoli. And the conversion does make it a three-point game. 45 seconds into the third quarter. And the Pokes will get the football back up just three. Now a big star for the first half offensively for Oklahoma State. Des Bryant, of course, he had that look. He had that, that bounce in his step in the warm-up, but he was obviously involved. Very uh, three catches in the opening drive. He went out, it was a knee injury, but the good news is we expected to see him in the second half. The x-rays were negative. Okay, now this is a dangerous scenario for Mike Gundy in Oklahoma State. Now you've got your football team over there, and they are so used to having Des Bryant on the field playing for them, right? If he comes out and he's not 100%, mm -hmm. you know, does that deflate your offense? You know, you've got to have a guy, you've got to have the team step up here. I think regardless of whether or not Des Bryant come back, comes back and plays in this game, Oklahoma State has to get Kendall Hunter going. He's a guy who's averaging 100. 26 yards a game. He only has 20 yards up to this point. They have to keep him involved regardless of whether or not Des Bryant's presence is back on the perimeter. Yeah, Hunter averages 6.7 per carry. He's really been held in check and it hasn't looked all that comfortable. His frustration, I think, is shown. Yeah. It's hey, going on here. And if I were his running back coach, I'd say, hey, Kendall, you know what? I know you're frustrated, but you've got to run past some arm tackles. Quit dancing in the backfield. Let's break some tackles first. Let's get some three and four and five yard gains first. It's a very short kick. 
Now she have to take it just to the 20-yard line as Victor Johnson, the true freshman, who fights out to the 30-yard line. Aaron, what's uh, the latest of the condition of Mr. Bryant? Well, Des Bryant, as you mentioned, had x-rays. They were negative. He even had a chance to see an orthopedist back in the training room, Chris, and they said he's fine. He's good to go. He does have a protective sleeve on his knee. Now, it was funny. When Walter Thurman ran that back, Jesse, you had mentioned how Des Bryant runs like he's angry. He was running up and down this sideline like he was ticked off about that. So he's going to try to give it a go and see what can happen, guys. Well, we'll see if Thurman's win that he's guarding Bryant here. Number six on number one. It's Robinson rolling to his right. Takes a shot along the sidelines, and that's a catch made over there by Damian Davis, who has had some big games this year, often benefiting from the double coverage that Bryant draws. You know, I was watching away from the play right there. I was watching Des Bryant to see how he was running. He yep. tried to run a shallow cross. Craig, you're shaking your head because you saw the same thing I did. Yeah. Not very confident. That was nowhere near full speed. Now play action, and Robinson will throw it downfield on second and short. And along the sidelines, once again, it's Damian Davis. He beat Jarris Bird, so maybe Brian will just be a decoy. Absolutely, Fowler. Way to go again. You're on right, top James. of it there. Way to go, Vern. <laughs> You're on it. That's exactly what he is. He's a decoy right here early in this quarter. May not stay the rest of the game there, but definitely drawn that coverage over their opposite side of the field. Remember, it's Missouri that left Damian Davis alone. He had a couple of huge catches in that win in Columbia. Official timeout, the previous play. Is under We're going to take another look to see if in fact, that was a catch. It looked okay. I think it was a catch. I think his foot came down in. I think his knee also came down in as well. And D Damian Davis, six foot five. He's a big target. You see, he's got possession there. The right foot down. Well down. You know, I'm not That's sure a catch. what the issue is. Yeah. 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 But, you know, watching Des Bryant, that, isn't it interesting? We're sitting here looking to see if he's got it away <laughs> yeah. from the now Maybe he's just playing possum. Do you think he's... Yeah, that's a mighty big possum he's out there running around with right now because he does not look like... But maybe he gains confidence. Could be. Could be. Yeah. Taylor, the receiver coach right there. Another, another yeah. Texan, right? A you know, funny story is they had Des Bryant go up to the secondary coach at Oregon this week, <laughs> and he tapped him on the shoulder, and he says, Coach, you After know who I am? The ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a catch. So he's, Des Bryant says to the secondary coach at Oregon, he goes, you know who I am, coach? And he goes, Des? He goes, yes, I am. I'm your worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Bryant's well, personality. They put him up they, to it. They put him up to yeah. it. It was a fun, fun joke. It was a great, great personality. He was their worst nightmare. It, it came true in the first half. Unstoppable. Now we'll see if he is just a decoy or if he can continue to make plays. Make it to Hunter. Robinson fires over the middle, and it's Bryant making the catch. Down inside the 15. Single coverage again on Des Bryant, and that time Oregon decided to bring the safety in the box. They were anticipating run. They made that an eight-man front. Des Bryant able to take advantage of that on the outside. He's dragging the left yeah. leg. No question about that. This is a warrior on the football field right now that's, like you said, though, Chris, maybe he starts to gain a little confidence. Look at the hands. He, he's got some of the biggest, strongest hands in college football. He kind of caught that on the on the bottom of the football. We call that snow coning the football. Robinson rolls to his right, throws back to his left, and over through Pettigrew. And the tight end open. You know, this is a great design play here. Zach Robinson just got a little pressure on him. Pettigrew, one of those guys, again, just sneaks around, lays low in the weeds. He's very patient with his route running and spreads that Oregon defense out. Yeah, that he, again, he's still looking for his first touchdown catch of the season, as good as he is, as big an NFL future. As everybody says he has, doesn't have a touchdown. It was right there for him. Well, here's maybe a reason why this ball got overthrown a little bit. He needs to obviously to complete hit. that. Nick Reed absolutely leveled Zach Robinson. Yeah, should have been a flag there. Should have been a flag. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Second and ten. Robinson fires, and it's intercepted. A very poor throw, and Jarris Bird stepped in front of Bryant and takes it back to the 40. 
So maybe too much focus on the All-American. Bird was right there. Well, and you saw that coming from a mile away. You go back and you watch Des Bryant's body language on this route. He just kind of runs a fade. He's not running full speed. He puts his hands up in the air as if he wanted this to be a jump ball. Zach Robinson has said decides to throw the line drive. The problem with it here for Des Bryant is on a bad ball or a ball thrown behind him like we see the stop routes all the time, he doesn't have the legs to stop and go make the adjustment to make the catch right now. Yeah, Craig, but that, he, clearly he wanted a different ball thrown there, right? Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe, but if, if he, if, you got to figure out somebody else to go to now. You can't rely on Des Bryant. They like to rely on Jeremiah Johnson. The Ducks would picks up about seven on first down. I think what you get into right now, if you're Oklahoma State, is what, are the, what is the point of diminishing returns of having a not 100% Des Bryant on the field? If he's 80%, 90%, is that better than having his backup in who can go full speed? Jesse, he just said there he pointed up. I think you're right, Chris. He was looking for the ball up high in the back of the end zone, not one behind him. Johnson again. And he runs smack into Ricky Price. Price, the guy got run over by Masoli in the first half. He delivered the blow that time. Yes, he did. He brought the wood. Now, now, now we're going to see this Oklahoma State defense. They have to step up. They know they've got their All-American over there that's hurting on offense. It's up to their defense to step up. What about Oregon, though? Do you, do you stick with the status quo? Do you stick with the game plan? Seven points in the first half. Do you stick with it? Or do, or do you think at halftime they went in the locker room and maybe started looking for some other answers? Trouble converting on third downs in the first half. Just two of seven. They get this one. Aaron Scott on the short route crosses midfield. That's the answer for me right there. Circled him here. He had three catches for 72 yards in the first half. He's a playmaker, leading receiver for him. Get the ball into the hands of somebody who's doing something on the field. Well, this offense is so used to big plays and scoring quickly and scoring on long plays. But this is something that they were they were lacking in in the first half. They have to become more efficient in the short passing game. If that means jailbreak screens, flanker screens, so be it. But you have to be able to pick up short yards through the air as well. It's only a first down throw. Ooh. Almost intercepted. Jacob Lacey. Stepped in front of the receiver. That was pick six the other way. Couldn't hold on. Well, the senior knows how to read routes, knows how to run the right angle. Boy, this is how you do it, Jesse. When you see that, you know what the route's going to be. Place it the way he goes to the angle. Absolutely. He reads it well. And you know what? It's funny. Three seniors in that secondary for Oklahoma State. They do a very good job in route recognition and understanding when the ball comes out. They've been getting a very good jump on the ball in this game tonight. That's Lacey's 40th start. He gets high praise from opposing coaches in the Big 12. They really respect his ability. Masoli fires far side, and this one is intercepted by the other corner, Harris Cox. Cox is just a junior, but he played that ball like a senior. He watched the last play, and it was an exact replica of jumping the route, going back for the football. Glenn Spencer, the acting defensive coordinator tonight for Oklahoma State, told us they have great speed in the secondary and a lot of seniority. He feels very comfortable and confident playing man coverage, and that's why. And you Jason, cannot play that any better. Yeah, you know what? Jason Williams Ford didn't have the traction to plan and properly come back for the football as much as the defensive back Cox did. You see Glenn Spencer, he kind of has a kind of a country music singer look to him. Like he should have a buckskin jacket and a guitar or something. <laughs> He's got to be pleased with his defense tonight. This is Tostin. He's hammered after about a yard. How about Oregon's defensive line? They are just not letting Oklahoma State find a gap. They've stopped the run. That's always their first priority. Aliotti will tell you, they, they sell out to stop the run. They've been hurt, obviously, by the throwing of Robinson. Well, we talk about how good Oregon is running the football. Oklahoma State averaging 256 yards themselves. That's seven in the country right now. Only 72 yards on the ground. Only averaging three yards per rush tonight. Bryant is in the ball game at the top of the formation. Look for Brian on the far side. Threw it outside. He was covered by a linebacker, Spencer Pacinger. Well, it, it was a zone defense. Spencer Pacinger was running to the flat and almost got under that football. You see still, though, Mike Gundy calling a lot of plays for Des Bryant. The ball is being predicated to be thrown at Des Bryant, even though he's not 100%. He did eight yards on this third down. 
More defense by a lot than we thought we'd see in this ballgame. Robinson was looking to Bryant all the way. Now he dumps it off short and short of the first down. Toasten, well covered right there by Eddie Pleasant, the backup linebacker. Oh, man, what an outstanding job by Eddie Pleasant. This is Nick Aliotti's specialty now. Defensive coordinator knows how to coach him up. When Pleasant saw the route, he had zone coverage, but he sucked up the receiver immediately. Oh, Nick Aliotti, they're only sending three players in to get him, so a lot of guys back watching the football. Great job of tackling in space. First punt tonight by the Ray Guide Award winner. Matt Fox didn't punt often enough. Only 31 all season to qualify in the NCAA stats, but he was still named as the top punter in the country. That was not one of his better efforts. A flag is down on the punt. Kind of a low, ugly kick. Rusty. <laughs> can a punter get rusty? Sure he can. In, in much practice. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> 31 punts all season, Craig, is not a lot. It gives you. <laughs> yep. All right, fellas, let's sort it out. Oh, we got some guys yelling at each other here on the Oklahoma State side. After the play, first of foul. Kicking team number 44. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First it's Donald Booker on the special teams guilty of the 15-yard penalty. So instead of being pinned back, Oregon's field position improves. They'll take over at the 37, now trailing just three here in San Diego. With 2009 just around the corner, you may be thinking about your New Year's resolutions. As college football icon Joe Paterno once said, the will to win is important, but the will to prepare is vital. Coach Paterno was right. Preparation is one of the keys to success, whether on the playing field or in planning for a long and prosperous retirement. Pacific Life wishes you a safe and happy new year. Please enjoy the second half of the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. gifts are found under the tree. Here's a clue. Check your fridge. Have a great holiday. Miller Lite. Great taste, less filling. Okay, there's something wrong with your eye. One iris is a different color than the other. Which happens occasionally with twins. I'm an only child. On January 9th, you would have had a brother, but he died when you were both in the womb. The co-writer of The Dark Knight. This thing is trying to use you to enter our world. Brings you a vision. I'm being haunted by someone who's never even born. Of evil unborn. Ah! He wants to be born now. The Unborn. Rated PG-13. January 9th. Ah! We got it. Come in. Looks like the med school scouts are out early today. There are over 380,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. To learn more, go to NCAA.org. In our Pacific Life game summary, it was Des Bryant. A fast start for the Cowboys, the All-American receiver. Involved nine catches in the first half. Scored a touchdown there before he left the game with a left knee injury. Good start for Zach Robinson. Cowboys built a 17-7 lead. The only points in the first half coming on a touchdown run from Jeremiah Johnson. But Oregon get the big kickoff return from Thurman to start the third quarter. Two-play, three-yard touchdown drive. They've tightened it up. And five straight stops for the Oregon defense. Missed field goal. Stopped on downs. Two interceptions. He just forced a punt. Has 
False start. Offense, 68. Five-yard penalty. The down remains first. They got C.E. Kaiser who's playing this game with a some concussion symptoms of virus. He did not start at that right tackle position replaced by Mark Asper, but has been able to go tonight. And makes it first and 15. Fired back on the left side, juggled by Holland. And that blew up the timing of the play. Levine there to tackle him for a loss. Again, there's another ball. I'm going to call that the fourth drop tonight by Oregon receiver. drop had been better because they lose yard. Yeah, you know what? you got to make the catch, make a play, make a miss, do something. If you drop it, you have no shot of a game. Well, and again, the screen pass has been really the only effective tool in the short passing game for Oregon so far tonight. I saw Chip Kelly at halftime. The offense is so used to scoring quickly. They don't really know what to do when they get frustrated like this. This is Masoli taking off and it'll be a, a makeable third down attempt here at nine yards but you know, they did just get in this rhythm where they score so quickly that it's been frustrating for them. Well that's why I wonder about the psyche of an offense like this because as a player you prepare for a month you watch the same tape you put the game plan in early you practice for a month you're used to scoring 42 points a game you come out it's not working do you go in the tank because where do you go from here? See if they can get eight yards. They throw down field, but again, miscommunication way over the head of Holland, and Lacey was defending. And that was a result of pressure from Oklahoma State. Yeah, Andre you know, Sexton all, came in there. He sure did. You know, Sexton's been a heck of a player for this team all season and for his whole career. But this was really an Oklahoma State defense. They stepped up for their offense that's trying to get a little traction with Des Bryant on the side. And now it goes back deep. They receive the punt from Josh Shiree. It is Bryant. He's taking a pair. Back to the end zone this season. Averages 17.9. And they punt it <laughs> well away from him, right out of bounds. Give him no chance, bad knee or not, to make a play. As it is, it sets up the Cowboys at the 30-yard line. Coronado Island, a beautiful destination here in San Diego. Not a bad place to live. Looking good, Slate Sanchez. Beep, good evening. Slate Sanchez's phone here reporting from the demolition site. Slate and the rest of the action news team don't have AT&T, which means no bars out here on the outskirts of town. So we didn't get that call about the new blast zone, which is now here instead of way over there. I'm Slate Sanchez, and I'm about to be the news. Switch to the network with the best coverage, AT&T. More bars in more places. It goes 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds, making it faster than a BMW 550i. And it's more fuel efficient on the highway. The Pontiac G8 GT. Made by GM. Surprised? Or get a 2009 Pontiac G8 starting at 25479 during the Buick Pontiac GMC Red Tag Event. Plus, get the best coverage in America. Hurry, Red Tag Event ends January 5th. Are you ready to change your life, look younger, and be stronger? I went from a size 38 to a size 30 and lost over 70 pounds. You too can get remarkable results with Bowflex Home Gyms. All it takes is one simple workout, 20 minutes a day, three times a week. When they say you can work out 20 minutes a day, three times a week, they mean exactly that. You've got to get this DVD. It'll change your life. Call now for a free DVD that shows how you can get great results with Bowflex Home Gyms. They're designed to work you hardest where you're strongest. Only Bowflex Home Gyms have power rod technology. The secret to getting a strong, sculpted body fast. I am not embarrassed to take my shirt off. I look better. I feel better. My wife gives me that little wink every now and then. Own your very own Bowflex Home Gym for no money down and payments as low as $14 a month. Be strong, be fit, be Bowflex. To get your free DVD, give us a call or go online to getabowflex.com today. ESPN College Football, the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, is brought to you by Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Offering insurance, annuities, and investments by Pontiac. Vote now for the Pontiac Game Changing Performance of the Year at ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. And by Bex, the beer that said no to anything but all natural ingredients. Bex, different by choice. <laughs> they don't have sea lions and still water. Andre Sexton. <laughs> 
swap and spit there with a new friend at SeaWorld. Oh, man, Cabo. He dated a girl once named Mrs. Cabo, maybe, but <laughs> I guarantee you we're scared he's going to get chopped on the cheek. Sexton did a big season. Never thought it would end with a smooch in the sea line. Top tackler for the Oklahoma State defense. And now it's Robinson back to work, firing over the middle and over the head. Uh, Brian continues to lock in and look for his All-American, but Robinson's been a little bit off in this second half. As we check back with Reese Davis for a Sports Center right now. All right, Chris, coaching carousel continues to spin after 14 seasons. Mike Shanahan done as the Broncos head coach. He did win two Super Bowls, as you well know, with John Elway at the helm, but just 24 and 24 over the last three seasons. Another night, another top five team going down. This time it's Oklahoma who fell on the road at Arkansas despite Willie Warren's 35 sports center after the game. Stay current ESPN News. And this is an option keeper for Robinson who is just hammered at the 35. Hops up quickly. T.J. Ward, the junior safe oh, off the lumber. Just a violent collision. Woo! Jesse, I know. Now he's starting to feel it after the fact. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. Watch, watch, just listen at the end of this play. T.J. Ward. Ooh. He just gets folded in half. Oh, wow. What makes it worse is that the Oklahoma State was guilty of a hold. That play didn't even really count. Oh. <laughs> That's not an official play. Robinson hopped up quickly, but after he got up, you could tell it had an effect on him. I was going to say, I give Zach Robinson a lot of credit for popping back up as fast as he did like that. But you see the after effects of hits like that late in the Mark, game. He's right. been getting popped a lot Mark in the that second play half. right there because he just yeah. threw one ball high over Brian. Mark it. Remember, he got hit pretty good by Nick Reed in the first half. And a, Questionable non-call of a potential late hit. Second and 20 after the holding penalty. Good protection this time, but Pettigrew can't hold on. So all of a sudden, it's the Cowboys' offense starting to misfire. You know, and maybe it's not so much great defense right now as it is just, like you said, a lot of misfires on offense, not in rhythm, not in sync. We've seen a lot of drop passes on both sides. Both quarterbacks a little bit inaccurate right now as well. And, and you know what? Oregon's defense, they're on the field more than anybody in the country, right? Like 973 snaps this season. That's crazy. So this defense now, they've only been out there for 55 snaps. Their offense is starting to catch up now, and it's giving them a breather. Trying to get a sixth straight stop of this Oklahoma State offense that was unstoppable in the first three possessions. And that's almost intercepted. So Robinson now just four of ten, and he got hit again. Jesse, he's not seeing it here. Look at the three-man rush. There's eight dropping in the secondary. He's been banged around Nick Reed earlier in the game. And we just saw the one that T.J. Ward's smoking with. Well, and these hits have a lasting effect on a quarterback. Believe me, you'll carry that with you as a quarterback the remainder of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Gripping the helmet. Spodge comes on to punt. And a rugby punt, very ugly low kick on the bounce. Fielded very well by Bird. And Jarris Bird, who had the interception earlier in this quarter, takes it back to the 40-yard line. The Ducks will start in plus territory, down by three. Three games on New Year's Eve day, beginning at noon Eastern time. The Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl, Houston against Air Force, BC against Vandy, the Commodore's home city. And then the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Yellow Jackets will make it back-to-back -back wins over the SEC, 7-30 game. But Houston and Air Force already played each other this year. It was a game that the Air Force won 31-28 at a neutral site. That's a great game because it pits a great passing offense versus a very, very good running Air offense. Force won that without completing a pass. They yeah, beat Houston in that game. <laughs> well, Garrett Blunt is in the ball game, but it's Jeremiah Masoli, the physical keeper by the quarterback. Heads for the end zone.
We said he was a little bit thick. He'll look up a DB and blow him up, and that was Quentin Moore who just got destroyed in the secondary. Mike Bellotti said that right now, Jeremiah Masoli, Masoli understands how to run the read option as well as Dennis Dixon did after three years. <laughs> Bring it to the house. He didn't even try to run around him. He actually hunted up Quentin Moore, ran right over him at 5'10", 215, that low center of gravity, ran him right over and the Ducks take their first lead of the night. Flint adds the conversion. Oregon sparked by that second half kickoff return as take a momentum in this game. It's the Holiday Bowl. What do you expect? Well, they didn't expect this in the secondary of Oklahoma State getting run over by the quarterback. You've taken a journey filled with surprises. You set your sights on a destination and arrived exactly where you wanted to go. With Pacific Life, you're ready for wherever that road leads to next. As you head towards your future, count on Pacific Life. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. Out on the mountain, the seed of an idea takes root. Then it grows and evolves. And finally, you're ready to unleash it on the world. See original works in sport at Winter X Games 13. Starts January 22nd on ESPN. That's one latte. Keep the change. Whoa. You can use that change to get double the beef for only 89 cents. Double the beef? You really just pushed a button. Change the way you see change. Taco Bell's cheesy double beef burrito. A double portion of seasoned ground beef smothered in melty nacho cheese sauce. It's double the beef for only 89 cents. Can I get some change, please? Why pay more? Center. Mike Shanahan out in Denver. How does that change NFL coaching searches? What the Jets are willing to do to snag Bill Cower? See how Herbie did in his bowl picks? And was it a happy birthday for LeBron in Miami Sports Center next? Red Bull. New year, no limits. 11 p.m. Eastern, live on ESPN. Welcome back to the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Jeremiah Masoli has given Oregon its first lead. And a congratulations from head coach Mike Pilati. A big smile from the quarterback who's really struggled as a passer tonight. But that play will spark a team. All season long, he voted the Pontiac Game Changing Performers of the Week. It's now down to four for the performance of the year. Michael Crabtree's catch. Buffalo's late pass to beat Temple. Arkansas's touchdown to beat LSU. And Bama's pick. No. An overtime to None. beat LSU. For me, it was you. your expression on the sideline, the Crabtree touchdown. <laughs> Priceless. No, I think that was Priceless. It. That was a play that did reshape the championship chase for sure. <laughs> ESPN.com search Pontiac or Pontiac.com. Here's the short pooch kickoff. He's fielded the 37-yard line. Very short return by Donald Booker. Oh, again. You're going to show this again. <laughs> well, why not? This We're one is the run. best play of the year. The double clutch, too. You're there. Oh. And you reek clutch as he takes off. Because right there you realize, oh my gosh, he caught it. <laughs> He's going to score. There's a second to go. Texas is going down, and the championship chase is all changed before your eyes. You thought it was finished, didn't you? You know, And your buddy Chris Felica standing next to you looking at the scoreboard. You guys got a lot play. of mileage out of that. Everybody in the truck, too. Okay. That's, hey. <laughs> all right, now we'll see how 
the expression changes in the face of the Cowboys. This is a new experience down in this ballgame for the first time. It's Robinson taking off. He's stopped in a shoestring tackle and a very good one there by Tukuafu. Don't you, you know, like that? That might have been a bigger gain. Well, you wonder right now, I wonder right now, if Oregon defensively is smelling blood. you got an All-American wide receiver in Des Bryant, not 100%. All-American running back in Kendall Hunter, who has not had his presence felt in this game yet, and you're starting to rattle Zach Robinson with some big hits. I like the fact that they come out and he runs the football. Yeah. Show him I'm not giving up. I'm not in the tank. No white flag here. And they fire far side. This is Bryant. He gets a block and gets the first down, and that'll be the Holiday Bowl record for receptions. Bryant, who had nine in the first half, matching the record held by Roy Williams of Texas and David Mills of BYU. Completely admire Zach Robinson for sucking it up and not letting the big hits affect him. Getting the ball out to Bryant. And how about Des Bryant? being a warrior in this game. And staying in the game, absolutely, absolutely. Damian Davis doing a nice job on the perimeter on that screen, going to second level, knocking the defender down. Cowboys haven't scored since their first three possessions, scoreless since the first quarter. Handed to Hunter. And still nowhere to run. A.C. Matthews. Brother of Clay, part of that USC defense makes the stop. Aaron? Chris Craig was talking about just Zach Robinson sucking it up right now. He's been grabbing his lower back throughout this entire third quarter, obviously, from all the hits he's been taking. And think about it. After he took that huge hit, came over on the sideline and wasn't here for very long because, as we saw, Jeremiah Masoli run that touchdown in. So he didn't get much time. Trainers, Mike Gundy walked over, said, are you okay? He just pushed him away, ran back out on the field. Now he's known for his toughness, Aaron, leadership, all those intangibles. They like that about Robinson as much as they do his running ability in his arm. And second and seven. Ran away. They tried to get it to Hunter. Getting a hand up was Cole Linehan. What I do like from Mike Gundy right now offensively is although his quarterback has taken some big hits, you've seen a lot of the quick passing game right now. He's not allowing for slow developing plays to allow Zach Robinson to be in the pocket taking big hits. Catch the ball, get it out of your hands. Do you notice Nick Aliotti, the defensive coordinator, bringing a little more pressure along that line of scrimmage? Smells it blood. just seems like there are a lot more Oregon Ducks around the quarterback right now. Five for his last 18 passes. There's Reed, hasn't had a sack yet tonight. And working against Russell Okun, fine junior left tackle for the Cowboys. And they run it, and Robinson gets the first down. And inside the 30. Okay, now they've had success with this now a few times. And it's really the result of the outside. Brandon Pettigrew, the tight end. Watch him on the left side, 87. Oregon's defense is trying to run beyond and get to the perimeter. They're forgetting about the quarterback. Well, how about the play call in third and seven to run the quarterback up the middle like that? Again, Mike Gundy told us if they're going to win the game tonight, Zach Robinson has to run the football effectively. He's got a match right now, Jeremiah Masoli, doesn't he? You know, Masoli stepped up for Oregon. Robinson's got to do the same for the Cowboys. This time they fake the option, drops back to throw, and has a man wide open. Damian Davis down inside the five. Little wrinkle there. A great design play. This looks just like the freeze option they've been running all game so long. Uh, you know what, on the outside, watch the patient on the left side of your screen. You can't see the receiver, how patient the receiver was. He breaks down like he's going to block and then up the field. Excellent execution and patience. We talked about one player having to take over the load for Des Bryant. I think it's been Damian Davis so far in the second half. Three catches for 66 yards. The other wide receiver on this team. First and goal. Hunter's in the game. And he's got it. Stand up touchdown for Kendall Hunter. And the Cowboys retake the lead. Answer for the answer. Mike Gundy said he had to work on his short yardage goal line offense. Let's see if they've got angles. There's an angle right there. Let's see what happens here. They were going to call plays designed to give blocking angles, great execution, and the time off that they worked on with it works. Just a great answer by Oklahoma State there. After Jeremiah Mazzoli runs over a defender, sparks momentum for his football team, Oklahoma State comes back out and answers right away. Yeah, within three minutes, they regain the lead. It's been 
You know, a frustrating night at times for Hunter, only averaging 2.7 on his 10 carries, but he does have a pair of touchdowns. And a reminder that the Rose Bowl game is in my city, 4.30 Eastern time, 1.30 on the West Coast. The Nittany Lions and Joe Paterno, who's going to try to be on the sidelines for the ball game against Pete Carroll's Trojans. A test for that Penn State offense against the mighty Trojan defense. But the Lions will be a good defense as well. Absolutely. You know, and, and when you speak with Tom Bradley, their defensive coordinator, Tom doesn't talk about really any one individual guy. He's got some good players. But he talks about the no-name defense and how they all work together. I like watching low score, them low scoring play. Game, I'm curious to see Penn State yes. is, yes, is very explosive offensively. All those wide receivers. Daryl Clark has been tr tremendously efficient this year. But again, it, it's I think without question the best defense we've seen in college football this year from USC. Maybe one of the best we've ever seen in college football. And, and I know Stanley Havili, their fullback at USC, I, I didn't check with them today. They may have announced that he was going to play, but he was maybe academically ineligible for this ball game. They don't have their number two fullback, so they'd have to move a tight end to fullback. Havili is a key component of that Trojans offense. Which offensive line can protect the quarterback? So the Ducks have been playing from behind all night. They had the brief lead. Now down by three again is Thurman, who had the big kick return to start this half. Takes off again, loses the football. Hurdled a man, then dropped the ball on a big pile up at the 35. There is some fighting going on at the bottom of it. Oregon gets it back. And that is a huge break for the Ducks, because Thurman can thank Dewitt Stuckey for coming up with the football. All week long I've said that I felt like I was covering a regular season big game. The intensity was there. You've seen it in their practice and everything else. I'm now seeing a notch come up again. You see that his knee came up and knocked the ball out. It was an unbelievable hurdle move, but his right knee actually pokes the football out. You see, he doesn't have the football tucked away. It's dangling out loose, and his knee actually was what caused that fumble. How do you protect against that? Watch your right knee. Just tuck the football away. This is like Garrett Blunt, the big fella, just slipping and dropped for a loss. Lemon there to smother him. He had trouble with his footing. But, but what I was saying is, and did y'all get the feeling, though, in covering this game that it wasn't just a bowl game? You had a conference against another conference. You had pride on a lot, a lot of respect for each other. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure what you mean. It felt like a big I mean, regular season. I, I felt like a regular season big week game. That feels like a big game. I think both teams clearly weren't treating this you know, as, a, as a pleasure cruise. They, they, they wanted badly to win. Finish the season on a good note. There's a low throw. Scott scoops it up, but a short game. I, I, I agree that both teams it, it took it seriously. I just think yeah. that... Well, Bilotti said, you know, you, the, the greatest respect that you have for each other during the week is when you don't hear smack talking. That usually comes from insecurity or, you know, just right, big mouth. This week, both teams really eyeing each other, respecting each other. Well, the tangible things they're trying to achieve, a 10-win season, perhaps a finish in the top 10 of the poll. And there's an outside throw and an outstanding catch by Scott. A couple of drops in the first half, but give him credit there. But there's a throw that Jeremiah Mazzoli missed earlier in the game with pressure in his face, trying to throw the back shoulder ball to his wide receiver, hangs in the pocket, delivers the football confidently, and a nice job by Terrence Scott securing the football, watching it in. Sixth catch for Scott for 94 yards. Garrett Blunt to the left of Masoli. They fake it to him. And now a throw in the flat. And it was a dangerous throw. Is that a lateral? What's the ruling? Oklahoma State football. Ricky Price fell on it. It was Jeffrey Nail there. That was very close to being a forward pass. Did they rule on the field? Obviously they did. They ruled that it was a lateral. It's really close. I'll tell you what's amazing about this play. If Ricky Price had looked sooner, it looked like he could have intercepted that lateral and taken it into the house, but he slips. You're going to see zone read. Mazzoli keeps it. Now, as he's running, his key is to throw it out wide. Now, Ricky Price slips. Had he not, he could have caught it. But great job and awareness keeping the play alive to jump on it. 
I think that Mayo was set up to receive a lateral, but Masoli actually threw that ball too far forward. That was very close to being a forward pass. Yeah, I'm not sure that, you know, that, that was close. Now I think it was a, it was correct, a lateral call. Yeah, I it think was so a lateral too. barely, so the turnover, and this is Brian on the far sidelines. He makes the catch, but does not get back to the line of scrimmage. Pacing or stops him. The Ducks down by three, trying to answer. Got a big conversion, then the turnover. They get sudden change, and again, it's a young quarterback in Jeremiah Mazzoli that was playing junior college at City College of San Francisco last year. Great touchdown run, comes back on the field, turns it over right away. I, I, I really, Won a championship at that junior college. Yeah, that's a true freshman. I really like the way Oklahoma State, when they get to the line, they're putting mental pressure as well as physical pressure on Oregon's defense. They've got to get up, commit, get down. I just like it. I like the, the constant pressure they're putting on. It's great tempo to watch. Hunter, he'll be dropped for a loss. Great pursuit by Pacing. He's an ex-wide receiver, just a great athlete. They had to find a way to get him on the field, and he's found a home line. Well, you see the speed and his ability to run sideline to sideline, really running these options against him. It's not necessarily your best matchup because he can chase these running backs down. Both linebackers have impressed me at Oregon tonight, but they know where the play's going to the perimeter. Pacinger doesn't waste time. He gets there. He gets to the play. This should be a big stand for the Oregon defense after the turnover. To force a stop. Third and 14. Robinson. Flushed. And sacked. First time tonight. It's Rayshon Harris, his third of the season. And what a stand by the Ducks defense. And I put in tough position on their end of the field after the fumble. Yeah, you know what? I, th I thought that Zach Robinson here was really trying to lock in and find Des Bryant on the left side. Not a lot of legs to work to get separation. There's great bracketing. Well, because of that coverage also and the physicality up front, you notice Des Bryant had to break that route off yep. way early. That route was, it was intended to get near the first down markers. And that's serious. He's one yard, three yards, four yards, and now Dodge dropped the punt snap. There was no pressure, so he gets it away. But here goes Jarris Bird. <laughs> this game has turned wacky all of a sudden. You know, the, the yellow book future pros features a couple of guys who will be draft prospects. We talked about Pettigrew, the senior. Todd McShay and the Scott Sink guys say he's 21st overall. Very good for a tight end. And Chung on the other side is safety third best at that position. I think what the scouts love about Brandon Pettigrew is while he does have great size at 6'6", and he can work the middle of the field catching the football, he's also a great blocker. And on the flip side, Patrick Chung, complete headhunter back there in the secondary, he loves to hit. This is Johnson. Stiff arm as he's forced out after about seven. Uh, this is that point in the game where you say it's getting a little bit wacky, but if you're on defense, you have to remind yourself that you're going against option offenses right now. You must maintain discipline. We've seen Jeremiah Johnson in that first quarter take off go a long way. Hurry up for the Ducks, and it's Masoli firing in the sidelines. It's Scott pushed down inside the 45. We just talked about Oklahoma State, how great their tempo was in terms of getting up to the line of scrimmage and get going. Right there, you see Oregon doing the same thing. Oklahoma State kind of just lingering around, not keeping their head in, and Oregon coming up, snapping the ball and going. Some Oregon players were telling us yesterday, you know, the perception is out there that the Pac-10 is soft and the Big 12 is slow. So kind of expected Oregon to test to see if Oak State could keep up with them in speed. Johnson, stutter steps, gets away. And he's spun down after about six by Quentin Moore. That was a heck of a play. Right, you, you, that's the perception of the, yeah. the fans out there? Uh, I think the, the players. players the players. I think the players were looking at it as that, that people around talk about us being soft in the Pac-10 and slow in the Big 12. Masoli fires wide open. Has the tight end Dixon. And inside the 20. That's the exact same play that Jeremiah Mazzoli just completed a pass to Terrence Scott two plays ago. You see better patience now looking over the middle of the field, getting through his progression. And you saw the tight end Dixon that time. He wasn't lined up tight. He was in a slot out wide right. So moving him around, Chip Kelly making some adjustments, other options down the field for his quarterback. So he takes off and scores. He 
doesn't let mistakes bother him. The backward pass that results in the fumble, shakes it off, his second touchdown run of the night, and the Ducks regain the lead. Talked about the discipline required late in the football game. Watch backside. Watch what happens with your defensive end. Backside, this is what's being read by the quarterback. Total collapse. Pull the ball and go. And I'm going to short him. That's a hat trick. His third rushing touchdown in this quarter. And the Ducks, they're down. Giving up that fumble, looks like they might be going into a bigger hole. That defense, I think, sparked him. The great stand gets the ball back, and Masoli, third rushing touchdown tonight. It should have come as a monster surprise. We talk about Jeremiah Johnson with Garrett Blunt, but Jeremiah Masoli, 10th in the Pac-10, coming into this game running the football. You know, how about Zach Robinson, though, taking the hit, a late hit, wasn't called right there. Blown up from inside by Ward. He jumps up, though, he stays in the game. And on the flip side, Jeremiah Masoli giving the hits. He's been a monster. Hunting down the Oklahoma State secondary, running after them and delivering the punishment. But both players being productive in their ways. It's been a frustrating night at times throwing the ball for Masoli, although he kind of regained his marksmanship in that drive. Now it's Robinson's turn to try to answer. I think Terrence Scott, number eight for Oregon, has stepped up in a nice way in the second half to give him some options on the outside and some plays with his hands. This is what we thought we might get. He had 28 points in this quarter after only 24 in the first half. 21 seconds to play in this period. And Chip Kelly was saying, you know, Mike Bellotti giving him, he get him out of there. We have one game early in the season, but he wasn't playing well, and he, he lit him up. Dropped a few bombs on their phones and <laughs> said, well, you got one more series and you're out of here. And the wouldn't have scored. And they said, uh, next time on the phone, oh, was that, Coach? Is that all right? Is that, is that good enough for him? Is that real okay? <laughs> Victor Johnson on the return is stopped short of the 25-yard line. It's the Outback Bowl, New Year's morning, 11 o'clock Eastern time. South Carolina and Iowa, you know, Steve Spurrier landed down there in Tampa. The first question to him was, <laughs> because the Lions are going 0-16. Spurrier was a part of the Tampa Bay Bucks team that was winless. I don't think he, the ball coach did not expect to get that question. How about in this football Tampa. game, South Carolina quarterbacks have thrown 24 interceptions. at second most in the country. And they got to deal with Sean Green, the dope walker award one. Is that a lean in that game to Iowa for you? Uh, very narrowly. I had a tough one in my bowl mania. I think I gave that my five spot. That means not much confidence? Not a lot of confidence at all. This is Hunter. Trying to create his first big run of the night. Hits off nine there, which should be the last play of the third quarter. Defenses have had their moments. There have been some offensive miscues, but with 15 minutes to play, the offenses have found their rhythm. It's a four-point game. The Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, 15 minutes to play. Should be a good one. and 800 student athletes, 1.7 million fans, 34 more champions, college bowl games, where everybody wins, brought to you by the Football Bowl Association. It offers an EPA-estimated 33 miles per gallon highway, more than Camry LE or Accord. The Pontiac G6, made by GM. Surprised? Or get this G6 with an EPA-estimated 30 highway MPG for 18613 during the Buick Pontiac GMC Red Tag event. Plus, get the best coverage in America. Hurry, Red Tag event ends January 5th. First and second round coverage of the Masters, coming in April on ESPN. 80 of high school football's most coveted recruits give the nation a sneak preview of what tomorrow has in store. The Under Armour High School All-America Game, presented by ESPNU, Sunday at 8 on ESPN. 
Next on Sports Center, Mike Shanahan out in Denver. How does that change NFL coaching searches? What the Jets are willing to do to snag Bill Cower? See how Herbie did in his bowl picks? And was it a happy birthday for LeBron in Miami? Sports Center next. The biggest event of the year and soon. The Toyotathon of Toyotathons is your last chance of the year to get amazing deals. But the curtain is closing on these phenomenal offers, like 0% financing or $1,500 cash back on Camry, or 0% or 1,000 cash back on the fuel-sipping super sporty Corolla. Either way, you win. Hurry, the Toyotathon of Toyotathons ends January 5th. Somebody stole my truck and uh, they crash it. When I see it, I'm crying because, you know, that's like my baby. My first reaction is coming to you and see other body. Then the guy said, yeah, we can fix it. Now I see my truck and I can't find any scratch on the truck. Nobody can tell the, the truck is in a crash and accident. My truck is like brand new. Even better than can when I buy it. So when you switch your car and you want someone that's going to work for you, you'd be smart to come talk to the people at GNC Auto Body. Left Holiday Bowl will be decided in the final 15 minutes. Each team able to answer. It's the Ducks with a four point lead. In the home of Shamu. If I keep eating like I have been, I'm going to be one of those. <laughs> Some of the players uh, it had a good time out there. Other oh, Jer Jeremiah Johnson, there's no way I'm getting near a killer whale, a sea lion, none of that stuff. He doesn't trust them, huh? No, he did get to pet a cheetah at the zoo, he told me, which is a highlight. Robinson over the middle, it's Bryant. There's Bryant. Starts down inside the 40, even with a bum wheel, he's still dangerous. Great anticipation by Zach Robinson here on this throw. He throws the football before Des Bryant even turns around to see where the ball's coming from. And he's on the field. Bryant gripping that left knee, which was the problem in the first half. Been there, done that. Understand that feeling right now. You start to feel like you're really okay, and you make that dramatic cut. You don't protect your leg, and all of a sudden that inside of that knee just collapses. Right now, running really, I think, Jesse, about as well as we've seen him run in the second half. Yeah, just watching that, though, oh, still that, seemed yeah. like it, was, it wasn't it was 100% even mm -hmm. running down, but you see he knows it as he's being brought down here. Right here, he knows it. He had 31 yards in that play. His 13th catch again. He's got the Holiday Bowl record for receptions in a game, and that may be his, his final one. That's how it happened earlier in the game. The awkward stop. He, he loses footing on his right foot, but watch the left knee. Yeah, I think and that capsule, as they talk about, on the left knee. Left knee opens up pretty good. Mm. You see that? And, and uh, you know, terrible turf out here. Here's the backwards pass. Bo Dowling throws it back to Robinson, who's got all kinds of room. Stopped at the 15, he ran right into Thurman, but the trick play works. You know what, how about Mike Gundy though? This guy here coming up with a play that can, he loses Des Bryant, comes out, watch the total collapse of Oregon's defense. Look at everybody move to the right side of your screen. Well, and it's a nice job throwing the perfect lateral, gives his receiver a catchable ball so he can get it back to him early, and then it's just the athleticism of Zach Robinson as he gets upended at the end of that play. Walter Thurman with a great play in open space to keep from the touchdown. He had so many blockers out there, but it looked like he was headed for the end zone. Thurman stepped up, stopped him at the 14. We fake the reverse. Flip it off to Hunter. He tries to cut back. And he stopped after about a seven-yard gain. So Robinson has 315 passing, 41 rushing, out 21 receiving. Pretty good night. <laughs> pretty, pretty good night. All of a sudden, you know, this game started off offensive showcase, gets into a little bit of a wall, a depression, yeah. a defensive depression. And now here we are all of a sudden coming out of that bad economy. Offense is back on both sides of the football. And one of the guys who stepped up and his stock's risen in the second half has been Kendall Hunter. We didn't see Hunter in the first half. Now he's starting to make some plays for his stockbroker. <laughs> See Patrick Chung with the defensive leaders out of the ball game as the Cowboys go to a two tight end set. It's Pettigrew on the left of the formation. One second down. Hunter hammers inside the five. It'll be first and goal. 
very impressed. Sorry, very impressed with Oklahoma State. We talked about how they had a lot of problems coming into this game in goal-to-go situations running the football, but they've been very, very physical tonight running in, in this part of the field, Craig. Absolutely. You know, Mike Gundy was trying to figure out a way that he could get creative with his blocking. I believe this is Brian Lindy oh. back in the ballgame on first and goal. Mm. He's got man coverage outside. Keeper by Robinson to the one. <laughs> Pretty safe to say he's just a decoy out there. Yeah, I, I, I would be absolutely <laughs> shocked. If they give him a jump ball fade right now, I would be absolutely shocked. I think Jerry's Bird right now is looking at him thinking, you're really not out here running around, are you? <laughs> yeah, I would. Hey, would you go to sleep on him? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't either. Now they're right now. They're looking for their angles right now. They're trying to figure out which way to go. Check with me. He's going to make a call to give himself the best blocking angles up front. Second and goal on Sky Cam, and you see Robinson lunging for the goal line. No signal. Touchdown. So the late signal. Robinson able to keep it, get across, and the Pucks retake the lead. It's a boxing match right now. Both offenses slugging away. You see Jeremiah Mazzoli running touchdowns in three in the third quarter, runs another one in. Oklahoma State and Zach Robinson answer right away in the passing game and then pound it down in close. Very impressive. An Oklahoma State team that was poor in the goal-to-goal -goal situation. They're getting it done. They can't come away with threes. they got to get sixes here. Yeah, that was a pretty good look at 75-yard drive and seven plays. Now it's got the feel like last team with the ball wins, right? This is kind of what it was supposed to be. Get. This is what we anticipated coming into this game, right? And by the way, Zach Robinson has just surpassed his head coach for the all-time career record for total offense. He's got it by 13 yards. Coach Gundy just fine with that. Retirement. It may be a long way off or another adventure waiting just ahead. Pacific Life can help provide income you can enjoy for the rest of your life. Because retirement could be a very long ride. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life. Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. It's game time. Skybox is right up here in section la -de -da. How's everybody doing? Can anybody tell me what inning we're in? All right, boys, we take it back to High Life. See, the High Life is about sitting in the sun and, and watching your favorite pitcher get lit up. Take him out. Then they can't even hear me through this glass. Come on, boys. Need to smell me a hot dog or something. Just know I'm alive. Woo! Let me pass out some High Life. Taco Bell's new Bacon Cheddar Gordita Crunch. With crisp bacon on top of melted cheddar cheese added to the crunchy, chewy, cheesy Gordita Crunch. Bacon and cheddar make it better. Think outside the bun. It's time for you, the fans, to decide the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year. Willie rolls to the right. He throws into the end zone. Ball up in the air. It is caught. Touchdown. The Bulls win. Do you believe it? Eight seconds left. Time to make one play to throw. For Crabtree, it's caught. He played. Oh, he's the one. It's that Red Raider. Unbelievable. Michael Crabtree has done it. Casey Dicken gets the snap, wants to throw deep down the right sideline for Crawford. Touchdown, Arkansas! Touchdown, Arkansas! Go to Pontiac.com slash NCAA and view the biggest plays from the season. Each week, you the fans vote. And each week, plays will be eliminated until there are four finalists. Vote for your favorite, and the winning school will receive a $100,000 general scholarship from Pontiac. ESPN College Football, the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, is brought to you by Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed, offering insurance, annuities, and investments, and by Capital One Card Lab at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? Let's take here tonight, besides the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl trophy, 10-win season for the winner, which is a heck of an accomplishment. 
Oklahoma State thought to be a year away from excellence when the season began. Nobody really looked at Oregon as a 10-win team. This is Thurman. Stop just across the 20. That's some of the best kickoff coverage tonight by the Cowboys. Victor Johnson made the tackle. So we'll see if Masoli can answer now. Uh, well, you know what? In visiting with the coaching staff at Oklahoma State, they're well aware. These guys are not. This is their first rodeo, right? And they know that the number one play that Oregon can run is the zone read by the quarterback. And they got to stop it. There's nothing really flashy about it. So they got to keep the ends at home. I'd make him give the football up the middle. Well, of the field. it's what you said earlier, Craig. It's assignment football. The zone read basically is option football. The mesh point just happens deeper in the pocket. So it's critical right now. Oklahoma State plays great assignment football. This is more of a conventional option and a keeper by Masoli. And he just, no fumble, he's ruled down across the 35. But I think that, that play by Masoli where he just absolutely flat went more in the secondary en route to a touchdown turned around this game for Oregon. Uh, on this one here, it's a different type of option. He's attacking the in-man line of the scrimmage and they're losing their containment. They didn't believe at Oregon that Oklahoma State's defense was going to be disciplined enough play in and play out to stop them on the option tonight. It's coming true right now. Jeremiah Johnson, the left of Masoli, three receivers set right. Masoli keeps it, has space, decides to throw in one of those little you know, run pass options, but he threw it inaccurately to Mayo. It's funny, right now, offensively, if you're Oregon, I know Jeremiah Johnson has more yards right now, and I know he's faster and he's a game changer, but if I'm Oklahoma State defensively, my biggest fear and the biggest threat right now running the football, it is Jeremiah Mazzoli in this football game. Oh, yeah. There's no Absolutely. question about it. You know, and, and what's the strength of Oklahoma State's defense? Speed, right? Yep. They got to run to the football. They've got to get helmets around the football. Is the end around and diving forward is Johnson. First down across the 45. He had the big touchdown run in the first half. It's Masoli who's done most of the damage since. He's eight yards short of a 100-yard game. Max Unger was one of our impact players. I want to show you what Max Unger did. Look at the center, number 60. Look at the man, 51st career start for him. Get around and lead upfield. Nice job, Mr. Unger. You know what's amazing about him? 27 of his career starts were at left tackle. He's an unbelievable athlete playing center. It's unbelievable. Nobody offered him a scholarship but a high school <laughs> except for Oregon. Jason Williams on the catch, breaking free. Down the sidelines to the 20-yard line. First impact play for the big physical receiver. You see the speed. He ran a 10-6-800 in high school, and you see those long strides going down the sidelines as they get that jailbreak receiver screen. Oh, man, Max Unger, 60 again. Look at him on the left side, down the field, clearing block oh, with his leg legs. Leg the whip. leg whip. The leg whip. Where was the call? But, but you know what? Max Unger down the field takes a lot of energy, hurts himself. That's why you don't want a leg whip. <laughs> yeah, 31-yard gain. That is a, that's a dangerous play for the defender. Yes. You can also hurt yourself as Absolutely. a lineman doing that. Yeah, but, you know, look at the effort. This Oregon offensive line underrated down the field, Ooh. trying to roll him up. Mm. That's a tough kick to the ankle of Levine, mm. who was slow to get up himself. And <laughs> Delayed? Is it, what is it? it took a while to get to Both the brain. Guys there. <laughs> the brain took about three seconds to say, you're hurt? Well, you know what's wild is the, the turf got Max Unger there as well. He was trying to set up a block. He saw him slip. The feet came out from yeah. underneath them, and that kind of forced him into it again. The turf has just been the biggest enemy of all these players tonight. We've seen a couple guys get injured because of it. He's a Hawaiian native. It was all Pac-10 as a tackle as a sophomore. We're two continents behind schedule. Oh, hold your eggnog. I'm building my own Capital One credit card. I'll go with cash back and a jolly good rate. But sir, the reindeer are getting antsy. 
Now I'm gonna upload a photo from my beach house. <laughs> Mrs. Claus is a lucky woman, sir. Yes, she is. Personalize your card at Capital One Card Lab. Choose your rewards, interest rate, even upload your own image at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? Let's roll! How did we do this year? Divide the results of the interactive poll by 2850. This quotient is the first component. Pull the coaches and divide that number by 1575. Throw out the high and low numbers of the six computer rankings, add the remaining four, and divide by 100 to get the final component. Add these numbers together and divide by three. That's how we did. to mean something. It's what freedom is built on. So here's one. The price you pay for a Harley Davidson Sportster is what you get back when you trade up. So let's ride. ESPN College Football, the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, is brought to you by Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed, offering insurance, annuities, and investments. And welcome back to the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Ducks have the ball, down by three. And at the Pokes 20-yard line. Max Unger, the center, is on the sidelines. Jeff Kendall, the senior, is his backup. And an errant snap in the shotgun right away. Masoli, a good job to corral that snap. It's no game, but it could have been disastrous. Right off the bat, Kendall into the game, well, and it's a factor. It's such a big loss losing Max Unger, not only because he's a two-time first-team All-Pac-10 player, not only because he pulls and he's effective in the running game, it's the little things like just executing the simple shotgun snap. One of the things, though, that you can depend on here is Kendall is a three-year starter heading into this season. He's played every position up there. He's a versatile guy he's been there done that he's just got to settle in yeah, your center coming in cold it's a different thing in a shotgun offense isn't it good snap this time the seller looking to the end zone has a man touchdown Williams Terrific throw to a 6-5 target, and the Ducks regain the lead. There were two options open for touchdowns. Jeffrey Mayo in the inside, and on the outside, Jason Williams. But this, this offensive line hung in there, made the adjustment. Look at the outside here. Well, you see Jacob Lacey playing cornerback. He's just sinking. It's a cover two look. He thinks he has help, but almost looked as though maybe he was trying to bait Jeremiah Masoli into that throw. Masoli makes them pay. Masoli adding his first touchdown pass to three touchdown runs. And we've got a seesaw game in San Diego. 35-31. Next up, Robinson and the Pokes offense turn to try to answer. Pacific Life has been the power behind successful individuals for more than 140 years. Ask your financial professional about how Pacific Life can help you reach your retirement goals. Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Proud sponsor of the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. One latte. Keep the change. Whoa! You can use that change to get double the beef for only 89 cents. Double the beef? Change the way you see change. The cheesy double beef burrito. Double the beef for only 89 cents. Why pay more? The heartburn stopping strength of Zantac also comes with a refreshing cool mint sensation for strong, lasting relief. Heartburn, attack it. Zantac. Bowl week continues with the Capital One Bowl. New Year's Day at 1 Eastern on ABC. They come with a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. 
roadside assistance, and one year of the safety and security of OnStar. Buick, Pontiac, GMC. All made by GM. Surprised? During the Red Tag event, get a 2008 GMC Acadia for $26,172. That's a total value of $4,703. Plus, get the best coverage in America. See your local Buick Pontiac GMC dealer. If you're thinking about buying a new car or truck, you owe it to yourself to check out Healdsburg. All three Healdsburg auto dealers have unprecedented factory pricing. Rebates have never been this large, up to $10,000. Over 700 new and used cars and trucks, all tagged for clearance. But don't wait. This sale must end, so hurry to Sanderson Ford Mercury, McConnell Chevrolet Chrysler Jeep Dodge, and Silvera Pontiac Buick GMC truck, all on Healdsburg Avenue in beautiful Healdsburg. showcasing the two multi-thread quarterbacks in this game. Zach Robinson, 315 yards passing, does have a couple of interceptions. He's run for 44. Masoli, eight yards short of a 100-yard game. That was his first touchdown pass of the evening. You'd argue that both of these guys have been effective. Robinson a little bit more throwing it. Masoli a little bit more running it. The two great, young, spread offense quarterbacks Really the future, dual threats that can hurt you, throwing the football and running it as well. A smile there from Robinson, a confident look in his face as he chats with Gundy. Coming up to take the pick is Parrish Cox. And he's pushed back at the 25-yard line. There's been extra inspiration for Oregon all season, in particular here in San Diego, which is the hometown of Todd Doxey. He would have been a sophomore defensive back on this year's Oregon team, but tragically he drowned in a river near the Oregon campus in July, short of his 20th birthday. He wore number 29, and all throughout the season, the Oregon home games, his buddies, most of them defensive backs, except for male, the receiver, have rotated the honor of wearing Doxy's number 29. And they've had contact with the Doxy family here in San Diego this week. Talmadge Jackson, who's a backup corner wearing number 29 tonight, he presented a helmet to Doxy's grandmother at the luncheon the other day. Just a, a moving moment. And, and all season long, they've kept number 29 you know, in their hearts, especially here in his hometown of San Diego. Second and 10. There's Bryant not out there. Maybe, maybe it's finally enough with the knee tonight. <laughs> Robinson, pressure, trying to get away, sacks. Cole Linehan had the quick pressure. Tukuafu cleaned it up. Aaron? Chris, just to add more about Todd Doxey, obviously talking to Coach Mike Bellotti and the Oregon players just mentioning how this whole thing has come full circle. You know, they've they've been playing in his honor all season long, and to be here tonight to play in his hometown, also his grandmother that you mentioned, nice gesture by her, handed over $2,000 to head coach Mike Bellotti that people had been raising, gave to the family. She said, here, take this in his memory, do what you would like mm -hmm. with it. Coach Bellotti says he's going to think about what to do it with it, but obviously put it towards good use. So that was a real taste of mortality, a life lesson for his team. There's the high throw by Robinson. So Oregon's defense comes up with a big stop. The sack by Tukuafu. Forcing the, the third long. Tukuafu again pressuring. And here comes a punt. With only four, Oregon's defense was able to do that on the last two snaps, Jesse, with just four on the quarterback. Des Bryant not being out there that series. Even a gimpy guy, you wonder. Yeah, the first series where he really wasn't able to get out there at all, and not a very impressive one for the Pokes. There's the punt taken, falling to his knees, was Berg. So Oregon will take over, now protecting a four-point lead with 9.23 to play. <laughs> 
Jeremiah Masoli, with the read and the quarterback strength that he has shown tonight with his legs has been unbelievable. And this one right here, I think that was a trendsetter for the rest of the football game for his Ducks. Woke him up. That's the most ironic thing to me is we're anticipating LeGarrette Blunt to come into the game and provide that physicality in the run game, but it's actually been the quarterback, Jeremiah Masoli. And not only that, but running the ball so well in the third quarter and now throwing his first touchdown pass of the night just recently there, Jason Williams. Keeps it, and now he'll throw it to Mayo. Jeffrey Mayo hammers ahead for about three. Now, now this that's, is that's a play that was resulted in a fumble early. But but this is what makes this offense so difficult. Spread offenses that are going to run an option, and he's and right now Masoli's going to run the football. Make no doubt about it. But the receivers stay wide, so the defense, if they come in to tackle him, he throws it outside on the bubble screen. We used to see a lot of that last year in West Virginia with Pat White. When they're so good at running to Zoe Green, that's just one of those extra plays that you can put in the playbook. This is Johnson trying to bounce it. And he'll be dropped for a loss. Andre Sexton, the top tackler on this team, the junior backer from Houston, makes the tackle. By the way, Unger, the center, is back in there. Yeah, he is back in there. But you know what? It doesn't matter who's on the offensive line right now. Oklahoma State has to match what Oregon's defense just did. They've got to go in, break service, and get their offense back on the field. Break service. Jesse, we got a man. Finally, it's and it's, it's only here. taken us to the bowl right. game, but we finally got him. Well, you two guys, I got Mr. Wimbledon on my left, and I got Mr. Dr. Seuss socks on my right that goes to tennis <laughs> matches. <laughs> Dr. Seuss? He does every week. Third and eight. Masoli steps up. Fires at the last minute. A clutch first down completion across midfield to Scott. He gets up, wants to have words with Jacob Lacey, which will separate him. For college football fans who follow it through coast to coast, Russell Wilson at NC State's a baseball player that this guy reminds me of. Now, Masoli's a bigger guy than Russell Wilson, but watch his footwork and how he gets him around to make that throw well, with a dart. And the ability to create and keep the play alive and also running to his left, throwing the football as accurately as he did there to convert and get the first down. This is LeGarrette Blunt. The big guy hasn't really been a factor tonight. He's rarely carried the ball. Muscles ahead for six. A, a clutch conversion. He said Oklahoma State has to make a play on defense, and it was uh, Scott coming up with his eighth catch to move the chains. And this is a great time, I think, for Oregon to start giving LeGarrette Blunt the football. You're in the fourth quarter. Start wearing this Oklahoma State defense down because at 230 pounds, that's exactly what he does. Well, the, the problem you got at Oklahoma State, you can't roll the dice. If you blitz against an option offense and you don't do your job, it's a touchdown. This is Blunt using that big body. He's also got great speed. He's got the corner. Now Garrett Blunt muscled out inside the five. Well, Garrett Blunt for a big guy also has a lot of shiftiness and runs so well in the open field that allows his wide receiver to set the block up. Mark Lewis, the right guard, watch what he does here. This is outstanding work by the right guard of, show, of showing how to get containment blocks. I'm trying to draw on the ISO monitor. <laughs> that coming, I'm fired up, coffee kicked in. <laughs> You, you like it when the big, big ugly is making nice play. I was drawn. It just looked good to me only. He's drawn, he's drawn on the screen over here. <laughs> well, they run sets up a first and goal. And they give it to Blunt ahead. Still fighting. Stopped at the one. Yeah, you sense that conversion that they got, that catch by Scott. Real backbreaker for this Pokes defense. Means a lot for the Pac-10 right now. Pac-10 pride on the line against that Big 12 South. And there's this sneak. There's Blatnick, the defensive end, getting in there. Jamie Blatnick, number 50, out of Salina, Texas, my hometown. Jamie's a good kid, good player. Played football in high school with your son, eh? He did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Huge play here for Oklahoma State's defense. If they can stop them and force Oregon to kick a field goal, keep this thing a one-possession game, that is enormous. But they got the enormous again, body of Blunt to stop right here. Even if Blunt got stopped here, you think Oregon might go for it anyway on fourth down, go for the kill shot. This 
Zoe to blunt. No signal. Touchdown. He lost his hat, but he found the end zone. Didn't make much of an impact, guys, did he, for the first 50 minutes of this game, LeGarrette won. No, but it, it is a different impact that he brings to the football game. It's that physicality, and oddly enough, he set this up with a long game-breaking run, but you just see the strength. I don't know if he got either. in there, his, guys. His fanny was down on the ground. The football was not across there. He's down right now. He's yeah, down. He's down. On, yeah. If it's not the one-yard line, it's the half-yard line. It is being reviewed. Yeah, and they'll review it. His helmet was taken off there. Patrick Levine stopped him. If they go by that angle, you say they'll spot it short of the goal line. And then, and then what do you do if you're Oregon? If they do spot it short and it's fourth down, do you give it to the big guy one more time or do you take the points and make this thing a seven-point ball game? I'm asking you. That's you. a full yard. It's a full yard. No. Really? You, I think the football there? Inside the one, don't you think? Yeah, do you? Okay. It is not. It, it's not a touchdown. So five and a half to play. You have the chance to, to, you know, get him in the end zone if you can make a yard. You know, go up by ten. Do you, you gamble? I, I gamble. I put it on my 230 pound back and say, you know what? Fourth try from the half yard line. If it's spotted there, make this thing a ten point game, two possession game before heading in. How much money does this guy have? Not enough to buy that last touchdown run. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure? He's got to get with the zebras in a hurry. Yeah, he's done so much for the folks at Oregon, contributing so much money to the university and the athletic department as well. They have facilities that are mind-boggling at Oregon. Of course, they got yeah, Boone Pickens on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> Billionaire tail of the tape. <laughs> yeah. After review, the runner was down short of the goal line. It'll be fourth down at the one-yard line. As expected, Blunt ruled down before the goal line. And they're going to go for it. There was no hesitation, huh? No, none at all. Garrett Blunt on the field, Jeremiah Masoli, Jason Williams, Terrence Scott, the cut, they all come. So here it is. The Cowboys defense can make a stop, get it back down four, or... The Ducks offense will give them a 10-point lead. That's marked on the one-yard line. This is Blunt. And he doesn't get it. He's still alive, but the Cowboys swarm him at a huge goal line. Stand by Oklahoma State. That's who's alive. Oklahoma State. They stopped a 230-pounder twice. They stuffed Oregon's offensive line. Penetration beats you on the goal line. If you beat your man and don't let him score with you, you're going to stop the running back. We talked about it was Oklahoma State that was supposed to have problems in goal-to-go situations scoring offensively. Here you're right, Craig. That defense just wanted it more. Came off the ball, exploded, and was able to stop the progress of a 230-pound tailback two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Jeremiah Price came off the edge. Tonga Taya was the big guy filling the middle. So the Cowboys, who earlier had a 99-yard touchdown drive, take over on the two. Robinson from his end zone, thought about throwing. Now, at the last second, gets rid of the ball to Pettigrew, very close to the line of scrimmage. It's complete for about a nine-yard pickup. I I'm sure. I'm going to try to get in the head of Mike Bellotti right now. Mike Bellotti's probably thinking, look, if I'm up by a touchdown with a field goal, they're going to go score. Right. We're not going to stop them. Nope. There's a chance if they score late, they go for two to beat you. But they're going to go down there and score. So I got to get up more than a touchdown on them. You know, you have to go 98 yards. You put it in the hands of your defense, which has come up big at times tonight. Robinson pressured and overthrows Pettigrew. I don't think Des Bryant is in the game right now. He wasn't on the last series. No. And, you know, you, you, when Des Bryant's not out there, the game changes. Somebody else has to step up and make a play. Aaron, what do you have? He's been trying to plead his way in to let the coaches, let the medical staff, let him go play. They've told him, no, go sit down for a while. He was sitting on the bench with his helmet on, his arms folded. He's not happy. He's not out there. You see him put the gloves back on there? <laughs> he wants Banley to be out there. He's already set a holiday bowl record with 13 catches in this game. 
Robinson looks short and underthrows Mania. And it's just a different quarterback when number one's not in there, don't you think? He uh, well, doesn't absolutely. look as comfortable. Because all of a sudden, that primary target isn't there automatically every snap. He's not necessarily looking for no, He's running. lobbying hard You're not here. on the field, that's right. He's lobbying hard. He said, look, see, I can move my knee. I got the gloves on, Coach. So Jesse, on. you've been there before when you've lost your number one receiver. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't. You've got to readjust. you got to just have trust and confidence that the other guys can get the job done. You don't have to try to protect them with throws. That looks like what he's trying to do right now. Yeah, the Northern receiver had more than 16 catches this season. There was a one-man show at that position for Oklahoma State. Robinson just one for his last five, needs 10 on this third down. Here comes the blitz. It is, he throws, and it's incomplete. Robinson took a big shot. They brought more than they could block. Absolutely. Nick Aliotti, the defensive coordinator, several times tonight, when you didn't expect it, brings the pressure makes it easier to bring that pressure again without Tez Bryant on the football field because if he's out there and you're playing cover zero and nobody's back deep, Des Bryant breaks one tackle, he's gone. And it was Jerome Boyd, the linebacker, who hammered Robinson. A big three and out stop for the Oregon defense. And Berg fields the punt, takes it back inside the 45. So after the Cowboys defense made that huge goal line stand, offense couldn't move it. Robinson has taken some punishment tonight. He's had an impressive game. He surpassed his head coach in the all-time total offense category at Oklahoma State, but hasn't been enough yet. Well, the numbers have deteriorated throughout the game for Zach Robinson, in part because Des Bryant wasn't there for some of that game, wasn't there 100%, but also give Oregon's defense a lot of credit. They've been able to put a pounding on Zach Robinson, and I personally think that's had an effect in the way he's been throwing the football here late in the game. This is Masoli, keeps it. Navigates through traffic for about seven. Some of that punishment, Jesse, you talked about. Yeah, and as a quarterback, big hits, you can shake them off, you can get back up and play the next play, but I guarantee these stay with you. It doesn't matter at what point in the game they happen, you'll carry them with you until the final whistle blows. He's been very, very gutsy. He stayed in the pocket, but he has taken some monster Does it stay with you mentally or, or physically more? Both, but I would argue mentally for a lot of quarterbacks. Hanging in the pocket in those slow-developing plays, you think twice sometimes, your vision comes down, starts looking at pressure. Well, that's where leadership on your team comes in, though. Somebody has to go over and pick him up and make a play physically and emotionally work with him. Masoli, he stopped in the backfield. Could not spin away from Swanson, Miller, and Levine. They were going to throw that ball back across the field. Well, this you, here was set up nicely. Well, did you see LeGarrette Blunt coming back there? He had his hands up yes. in the air. I'm not so sure LeGarrette Blunt thought that Jeremiah Masoli should have pulled that football. Well, I, and you know what else? I'm sitting here watching that play as well. And you talk about Jeremiah Masoli being young, trying to make things happen, not managing the game where he should. Pogues spend a timeout. Third and six coming up when you come back. Capital One credit card. I'll go with airline miles and a low interest rate. We have internet access. I'll upload a photo. There we go. I was full for three days. Cheeseburger! No! Cheeseburger! Personalize your card at Capital One Card Lab. Choose your rewards, interest rate, even upload your own image at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? To look at it, you'd never suspect that this was part of a working landfill. That's because Waste Management works closely with communities and the Wildlife Habitat Council to make sure we can all live peacefully together. Today, our landfills provide more than 17,000 acres of protected land for wildlife habitat. From everyday collection to environmental protection, think green, think waste management. The 
There's no way to hide it. If you drive drunk, we will find you. Cops everywhere are stepping up enforcement and cracking down like never before. Sir, have you been drinking tonight? Sir, have you been drinking this evening? Sir, have you been drinking tonight? Make no mistake, you will get caught and you will be arrested over the limit under arrest. Now, a little more than 12 hours from now, Capital One Bowl Week right back at it. Noon Eastern Time, Houston and Air Force. Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl, Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl, BC and Vandy, and then LSU and George II, the Chick-fil-A Bowl in prime time. I tell you what you want to do is you want to make sure you stay outside and nice gap responsibility here because Jeremiah Masoli will definitely pull it and run it and hurt you like he's been doing the second half with the option. Yeah, big play here. Third and six. Ducks not in field goal range. And the Pokes get him off the field. Keeper. First down. Pretty simple. You could see it coming, but they couldn't stop it. It's a great play call by Oregon. Chip Kelly offensively anticipating two-man coverage on defense from Oklahoma State. Again, it's man-to-man. -man. Watch all these defenders with their backs turned to Jeremiah Masoli. They have no idea where the football is, and that's why he's able to run and get north. Oklahoma State had spent the timeout in that series, so it becomes even more crucial. They can bleed it down to just about the three-minute mark before snapping just, this first down play. It amazes me that, that you understand Oklahoma State does the number one play of what their offense is and what they do best, and you still can't stop it. This is Blunt. Garrett Blunt into the secondary. Hurdles a man. Muscles his way to the end zone. He waited a long time to make an impact in this game, but the big 230-pound junior college transfers take it over in the fourth quarter. That time they made <laughs> Masoli give him the football. They probably wish they had him. <laughs> That was an athletic play for 230, man. It's amazing to watch, and we've seen him do it twice now on long runs. He's such a good runner for a big guy when he gets in the open field. And it's going to be his team in terms of the tailback position next season. Johnson is senior. LeBlanc has another year here if he chooses to stay. You assume he would, and he, he needs to learn how to practice better, but he's a big-time game player, isn't he? He'll be good, LeGarrette Blunt will be, as long as Jeremiah Masoli is running the option like he is. It puts so much pressure on the defense. We've seen it time and time again where he gives it and fakes it and takes the ball. Look at the vision getting down the hill Watch and the up. blocking. <laughs> that, and then you got 230 pounds pushing. You know what? He, he ran He ran right over, turtle over Quentin Moore, the guy had gotten flattened by Masoli. I, I swear <laughs> these big running backs are conscious about that. You look at guys like Beanie Wells and LeGarrette Blunt. they know when they get into the secondary, all those DBs are going to be submarining and going low. How many times this year have we seen Beanie Wells hurdle guys? They can do it when they're that big. A lot of guys Nobody hurdling. No, in the Sean Moreno's done Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Brandon Jacobs does it in the NFL. No one wants to tackle these guys low. All right, we're giving a lot of praise here to Oregon's offense, and they're earning it, but the real praise should go to Oregon's defense. The last three yep. quarters, eight stops in ten possessions. This Oregon defense stepped up today. Nick Aliotti, he had a game plan and a way to go out and slow down and stop Oklahoma State. Yeah, the Pokes had almost 200 yards in the first quarter. Since then, much more effective job of the Oregon defense. When you say stop them, they have 452 yards and yeah. 31 points. And Brian, that's, that's Brian's the way, injury that, certainly was a big part of that. That's the way the game's changed. This is Victor Johnson. And the freshman out across the 25, so an 11-point deficit now, 256 to play. Boy, I tell you what, when you look at Masoli and his 16 for 106, the last six games he's averaged 90 yards a game on the ground and 250 passing. Jeremiah Johnson got most of his carry and yards on his first run. Well, how about this now? They run for 385 yards against Oregon State. They get another big day today. With Garrett Blunt now over 1,000 yards. It's the second time in Oregon history now they've had a tandem 1,000-yard backs since it happened with Maurice Morris and Ontario Smith. And Jeremiah Masoli, the quarterback, breaks the rush record for the quarterback at Oregon. Unbelievable. And Des Bryant down here at the bottom of the formation has talked his way back on the field. That's a very low throw from Robinson. He's just, he's looked off. 
right lately. Well, and it, but you see, you can tell by his body yeah. language, he's not 100% physically there. He's kind of, he's got his, his, his left hand on his lower left back. You know yeah. it's sore, it's aching, and it affects the way you play, mentally and physically. Okay. It's, you wonder, I mean, you know, Bryant wasn't able to get his, his coaches to you know, put it back in there in the previous series, which is you know, much more crucial than this one. I know he wants to, but he doesn't have it. He doesn't have his legs. You can't play the game without your legs. Pettigrew makes the catch in a short gain. Your clock ticking inside of 245 now. In, in this part of what you talk about, Mike Gundy saying, the future's bright for us. We're a young football team. You know, he doesn't have anybody else right now right. really ready to step up. Well, he said depth right now is a big problem on the team. He thinks that the 22 positions, 14 of them, he has a true two deep. They got to build more depth. They'll do that with recruiting. They'll recruit well again, but this is a team without question to look out for next year in the Big 12. Well, that guy's back. Hunter's back. Robinson's back. There's an option look, but Robinson will be stopped short of the first down as a flag comes in. And stops the clock with 2.11 to go. Brandon Blair got the first face mask. foul. Bradby the face mask, 88 defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. And remember, you know, 11, the bucket ready here. Yeah, 11 points down, a little over two minutes. This Oklahoma State offense <laughs> coming into the game 26 times they scored in less than two minutes. I'd be careful about that bucket right now. Absolutely. I'd leave, I'd leave it alone. I wouldn't start. I wouldn't revisit Kentucky LSU. First and 10 at the 47. This time Robinson keeps it on the option again. You know, Mike Bellotti trying to close out his fourth 10-win season. There'd never been a 10-win season in the history of Oregon's program until Bellotti got there. He's the dean of Pac-10 coaches, and in the time that he's been a head coach there, since 95, you guys realize that there have been four head coaches at UCLA, Washington, Sanford, Arizona, three head coaches at SC, Cal, Arizona State, Oregon State, and Wazoo. Unbelievable. Yeah. Robinson throws deep, downfield, underthrown and almost intercepted by Thurman. He's trying to get it to Neal. Uh, you know what I like and respect about Mike Pilotti? He's done it over a period of time. He's done it the right way. He's changed with times. He replaced Gary Croton two years ago with Chip Kelly, and I thought, oh, boy, this offense is going to struggle for a while, but he picked the right guy. Yeah, but at least three head coaches for every other program in this conference. Pilotti has said perhaps... One more year, perhaps two, not longer than three before he moves to the athletic director position and Chip Kelly takes over. Now they can begin to get the bucket ready, you think? Well, you, and, and to finish off from that deal, Pilates even telling recruits now, I might not be the head coach at the end of your time, but I'll still be around as the athletic director. Yeah, they dump it off the toast, and he's dumped for no gain. AC Matthews, Patrick Chung combining. Where you give up 31, as you said, close to 500 yards, and you can still feel great about your defensive effort. Isn't that incredible? I mean, it, but it's true, though. I mean, you, you play these spread offenses, these prolific offenses. That's the mindset you have. You come in, you know they're going to score points. It's a deep ball. Over the head once again of uh, the receiver. And I thought it was a real good matchup here tonight. You had the number two Pac-10 team out here. You had the somewhere in the number four range maybe of the Big 12. Yeah. Right? And and there was the Pac-10. You, you could sense those players over, couldn't you? That, they, that there was a little pride on the line for them. Well, I think both teams were hungry and wanted to be here and wanted to win this football game. You see now the guys getting it ready. They wait till fourth and ten. It's a smart move. Uh, they better wait and make sure they get him off the field right here. Yeah, yeah. Takes only one, believe me. This Oklahoma State offense, they can score quick. Robinson just chucks it downfield. Bryant pulled up lame on that route. He was well covered anyway. Now you can get the bucket ready for Coach Pilati. Oregon will get that 10-win season. And he will get wet. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I like about what Mike Pilati told us? He said this game was the conclusion to the 2008 season. He says a lot of coaches talk about the bowl game being the first game of next year. Yep. He says those are usually coaches that are trying to change something. There's nothing to change here at Oregon. They got a great thing going on. I really like that attitude from I, Mike Pilati. I reflect back to last 
November. We're doing their game at Arizona. And, and Mike Bellotti had a football team about to put it on Arizona. Dennis Dixon got hurt, right? Yeah. Their quarterback. Or they'd have won that game. They were number two in the country. They had a chance. They were right there to play for the national championship. He's rebuilt, regrouped. He's got ten wins. Yeah, you got to give, I think, Chip Kelly an enormous amount of credit for working with the quarterbacks. They've had, you know, Four or five different guys play the position this year. The guy in Masoli had no reps in practice at all before the opener. Zero experience. What a way to cap things off as the Capital One player of the game. And really the good news for Oregon heading into next year, whether or not Jeremiah Masoli is the starting quarterback, because we've talked to Chip Kelly, and he says, yep. hey, this job is wide open next year. Nate Costa comes back. You're on top. Yeah, That's absolutely. right. I watched him throw the ball pregame. Thomas is a freshman out of Texas. The kid looks great. So competition is what makes you better. But Jeremiah Masoli has played so well here now in the final four games of the season. Season. Great momentum if he is the guy heading into next year. Pretty good start to the bowl season for the Pac-10. They'll go to 3-0. And, and Mike Bellotti does secure the 10-win season. 20 years after he walked off a winner as a player in the Holiday Bowl, Mike Gundy will come up short tonight. Now we got 73 points.